Hey guys, what's up? Easy is everything, and welcome to part two of uh, creating our theme. In the previous part, which I will have an annotation down on the screen for the first 30 seconds of the video, to uh, skip the part one and to go to the next part three when it is uploaded. Um, just if you go ahead and watch part one if you already have it. And uh, we set up a, a theme or a little folder on our desktop called Tutorial Theme and put some uh, extra um, things inside that theme. So what we're going to do today is we are going to be creating custom sliders in Photoshop. And we're going to be using uh, things like iFusion for a reference. So if I could just find uh, common.apple.telephony. Okay, sorry about that, guys. You do not need to do this because you don't have it. Doesn't look like. Okay, let's go back. You guys do not need to do this. Huh. I guess it doesn't have a custom slider. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's 49 by 70. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the dimensions of the uh, slider. Here's one. Okay, so the dimensions are 71 by 47. So what we're going to do here is um, you need some kind of photo editing program. Right now I'm going to be using Photoshop CS4. Uh, just downloaded it. I didn't download the CS5 because I just don't like CS5 very much. It's not much different from CS4. It has more graphics to load, and it's a little bit more. Whoops, sorry about that. If you watched in part one, you would know that uh, my version of Windows is actually a uh, virtual machine. Here's my Mac running on an iMac. Into Cordua, pretty nice, not to be bragging. But anyway, uh, back in Windows, I'm going to go to File New in Photoshop, or just create a new document in any of your uh, any photo editor. I'm going to be using Photoshop, and if you really want to follow along with me, uh, I recommend that you get the 30-day trial CS5. But I uh, do have Photoshop CS5 on my uh, Mac, but this is for Windows, and I have the file set up on Windows. So anyway, uh, make sure that your file size is 70 by 47 by 47 pixels. Usually people in Photoshop, when they first boot it up, it's automatically set to inches. It needs to be set to pixels. 70 by 47. The background contents are transparent, so it can be rounded. Very important also. Go down under Advanced and make sure your color profile is working in RGB or just don't color manage the document. And make sure the pixel aspect ratio is set to square pixels. Once it's uh, like that, under color mode, you want to make sure it's set to RGB color. And just so we have some big bright colors. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that out so we can work in a separate view. Actually, that's pointless. I'll only do that on my Mac. So we're going to zoom in some by using Command or Control Plus. Whoa. I got just really magnified us there. Okay, sorry about that. I used the magnifying tool. Should be command or control plus. So to move back and forth in Photoshop or just use the magnifying glass to zoom in or to zoom out. Which I am zooming in. I'll fill the screen in. Actually that's not right. Fit screen. Good alright, minimize. There we go. Just gonna go down. I'm screwed stuff up. I'm just gonna go down here in the bottom left. You see, it's the percentage that you're zooming in. Set that back to 100. I'll we'll zoom all the way out. Okay. So we have our. Uh, actually, keeping that in mind. All right, there we go. I zoomed in 300%, and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and create our theme. I'm going to grab the rounded rectangle tool and set the radius to about 15 pixels. I just drag out a rectangle. It doesn't matter what the size is or the color. Just drag out a rectangle uh, about as big as the document. Uh, or the, uh, yeah. 
Um, now obviously it's too big, so just go ahead and press Control or Command T. Um, and it should bring up. Oh my gosh. Should bring up the free transform tool. I guess I'm just gonna have to. Um, Alright, so edit, free transform. There we go. Guess the hotkeys aren't really working. Alright, just resize it to the document size here and apply it. What happened to my layers here? New layer. I didn't even add the layer. That's, that's really weird. There it goes. Okay, I just guess it just need a little bit of that. Alright, so. I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer. I don't know what that was about. And we have the shape, and obviously this looks absolutely terrible. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, give it a gradient overlay. It's not going to be completely black, but pretty close. A very dark gray to a pretty light gray. That looks perfect. We're going to go under bevel and emboss and uh, increase the depth and decrease the size by about three, by about two pixels. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. Perfect. All right, and set to inner bevel, smooth, depth, 144%. If you want to copy me exactly, I'm just kind of reading out the stuff for you. Direction is up, size four, soft and zero, and then everything under the shading didn't really change at all. So that looks pretty good. And then we're just gonna go ahead and add a new layer. Actually, uh, actually, undo that. Right click on shape one and click duplicate layer. Um, instead of calling it shape one copy, we'll just call it shape two. And we're going to get rid of all the effects. And they didn't go away, but they're not up here. Just gonna press control T again. Apparently that is just not working. That one hotkey. So, free transform. Hold down Shift and Alt, or Option. Just kind of grab until the bevel is just barely on the outside. So we may actually have to go into the bevel and emboss it first. Actually, I'm going to use I'm going to hide. Yeah, that's that's pitch black right there. So we're going to have to go into the shading. The shadow mode is going to be a light. Gray, and we'll see if that helps any. It does, mostly a little bit, it really does. So we'll keep that right there and move it up. No, that doesn't look good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to go under the effects. And by the way, I probably should have mentioned this before, probably a lot of you are probably stuck. To actually get to this FX to this effects menu. Just click near the right, not on the arrow, but near the right. Um, see if you create a new layer. <laughs> Double click right about there and it should open up the effects. So that's where you need to click to open those up. And we are going to give this an uh, outer glow. No. Inner glow. I think it's going to be at the inner glow. <laughs> the uh, Blend mode is going to be set to normal. Yeah, it's going to be not inner shadow, inner glow. I apologize. The mode is going to be set to normal. The color is going to be set to a very light gray. If you want the actual hue number, it's 9E, 9E, 9E. So, and then just Increase the opacity to 100 or actually 80. Looks good. Maybe 85. Perfect. The size, uh, keep it pretty basic. Click out. And we're going to zoom back out to 100%. And that looks pretty good. It kind of divides. Uh, we're going to have to make that inner glow. Oh, darker gray. That'll look better. That looks a whole lot better. So basically what we've just done here is kind of created some kind of outline bezel and a little bit of a black indention is kind of the goal. 
And then uh, all we're gonna do is zoom back up to 300%. And I'm going to add a new layer and let's see if they miraculously under the arrow have some kind of weird tool. Arrowheads. Let's just go to the custom shapes tool and this one looks perfect for an arrow. Dude, that looks amazingly accurate. And we're just gonna center that as best as we can. Maybe the arrow keys to nudge it a little bit. All right, and we're gonna give it a color overlay. No, actually more like a gradient overlay. Give it a, under the green, give it kind of a darker green. Two more of a lighter green. And that looks beautiful. Aha. Uh, maybe move that up with the arrow keys. Just one little notch into the right. And then, uh, it's hard to say. Maybe an outer glow. A very small one. Blending mode to normal. And a sort of gray, grayish outline. And I'm going to leave the settings the same because that looks pretty good. Zoom out. Looks up like a perfect slider. So go ahead to File, Save As. Go on your desktop and find your custom theme that we made. And go under Folders, Telephony UI dot framework, which is where it should be. And I believe, oh, go ahead and change the format to PNG. And actually, I'm sorry. I believe, oh, man. Can't believe I forgot what it's called. Folders, telephone UI, bottom bar knob gray. All right, sorry about that. I just completely forgot what to name it. I forgot what the appropriate name was for it to actually work. Uh, the slider, yes, it has to be named a certain name to actually work. So make sure the file type is set to PNG under the correct folder. And you are going to name it bottom bar, knob, K-N-O-B, K-N-O-B, gray, G-R-A-Y. That's all one word. Click save, click none, or uh, yeah, for the interlace, click none, then click OK. And you should now have a custom slider. And that's what it's going to look like. And you can also do the same for the power off switch. So all we're going to do for the power off, just change the gradient to be red. And this one red as well. That's gonna be our red slider. So file, save as, same folder. Make sure it's set to PNG and your uh, regular slider should appear. Bottom, bar, knob, red. Click enter, interlace none. And then you can also have a slide to answer. Um, which of course you would just change it to like yellow or something or whichever you wanted. But since we're making an iPod theme, that's unnecessary. Um, you can do that if you want and just save the, uh, save the slide to answer as bottom bar knob green. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, please let me know below this video. And please guys remember, Check out part three, and remember, everything is easy.